Hello everyone and welcome back to Tone Plays Cogmind Part 5. Last episode we explored the lower caves, our first branch. We took it pretty slow as I was trying to explain all the ins and outs of the caves and share some tips and tricks for anyone who hasn't um, seen them before. Um, especially like the map sense pathing kind of stuff um, goes a long way there. Um, but we have now reached Zion, our first caves branch. Um, as I explained last time, you hit two lower caves maps, and then you get to the branch end. And we got Zion here. Um, Zion, a not-so-subtle reference to the Matrix. Um, you'll actually find a lot of those in Cogmind. Um, so we, we'll probably see... Actually, we're guaranteed to see more of this game if I don't die soon. <laughs> um, but how this works is there is a little outpost area, and then there's the... A gate that actually cleanses your corruption. So we should go there right away, even though we're only at 1%. If you have high corruption, though, it could be nice to go there. Um, but if you have um, Riff faction, um, Zion doesn't like you, so you have to avoid that. Um, it's probably the only issue you can have right away. But yeah, here's the gate. And you can see at the top here, quarantine array scan two systems, cleaned one. Oh, that's funny. It scanned this guy too because he was in here. That's why there's two systems. Uh, but yeah, we've been uh, cured of our corruption. We're at 0% corruption. But let's go see what there is out here. Stockpile here. Oh, real quick. You see this guy blinking? That means he has something to say. If you just bump into him, he'll talk to you. And it's green, which means it's something that they've never told me before. Or they have new information for me for this run. So let's see what this guy has to say. Transmission. Ah, you're just in time. I need someone to test the latest iteration of my visual enhancement algorithms. My last batch of test subjects all reported a permanent 10.3% improve improvement in visual clarity. Look at all those significant figures. I don't know if that guy uh, actually did that math to that detail, but I'll, I'll pretend he did. 10.36531% improvement in visual clarity, regardless of existing physical capabilities. If you'd like to try, enter slash slash mp9r. That is the code that you'll get for any kind of terminal hack, by the way. I'm at the terminal over there to register. It'll also work remotely if you'd like to try it from somewhere else. Oh, and I make no guarantees that this won't mess you up. <laughs> at least he's honest about it. Um, let's go give it a try, why not? Um, so if you want to use co uh, codes like that, you can go to manual command. You see it over there on the right. If you hit backslash twice, it'll activate that. You can just hit the letter instead of typing it all in manually. Connecting with Zion Terminal. Experiencing anomalous visual interference. Oh no! Yeah, there's a few commands like that that just screw you up. <laughs> he talks. Hmm, doesn't look like it worked. It uh, put us into ax uh, ASCII. Um, it should go away eventually, so we'll just deal with that for the time being. We have a Gauss cannon, which is a pretty cool cannon. Um, I'm not really a, a fan of kinetic cannons in general, so I'm not going to use this. Um, oh, timed out even without us moving. Subsystem restored. There's one that toggles your um, ASCII, so just so you know, F3 actually toggles between tiles and ASCII, so you can actually undo some effects like that right away. Um, there's a few, I think there's like two or three of those in Zion. They're just kind of fun, gimmicky things. Um, you can just ignore the codes if you want, but they're fun to try once. Um, they usually do pretty good damage, but they actually generate a lot of heat, um, have a lot of recoil, and usually a lot of negative salvage. If I'm going to use cannons, I am a much bigger fan of thermal cannons, which tend to not have recoil or salvage, um, or even pulse, or, uh, well, EM cannons. I'm actually using EM cannons right now, but like herf cannons. Some of the higher-end ones are really, really good. So I'm actually going to ignore that. Um, makeshift armor plating kind of sucks because it has low coverage, but it does have good integrity. See, this is only 100 coverage. If we even look at my light armor plating, it's at 180. or I'm sorry, it's 150, 50% 50 better. Medium is at 225, over twice as good coverage per slot. So I just ignore makeshift armor. Another heavy assault rifle. I think I've already dropped one of those. I'm in the last cave's floor, so I'm just going to ignore that. Um, this guy just came out of the... from the stairs, from the caves, and he's entering Zion. Um, so we can just explore all this. Usually there's like two or three events here. We just had that one. 
Um, and now we can actually go in. And yeah, think twice before angering these guys, because um, they will go hostile on you. Although these guys don't fight you if you try to kill Zion from inside. Um, so there's a lot of interactions. Um, any new lore for you that you haven't seen before will show up in green. Anything that will give you more intel, um, like, you know, um, map locations and stuff. Like, I think one of these guys will tell you, like, where Lorelord is from, that kind of thing. Um, they'll all be green. So just run around, talk to the guys that have green question marks. It's kind of the, the name of the game here. Let's see what this guy has to say. When we visit the materials levels, mines are a good way to escape pursuit um, or more quickly reach a different level. Um, okay, thanks for telling me that there's a mines floor in minus 10. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just have like random info like that. If we were to pull up my my records in the, the lore collection, anything from Zion would show up here. So I already have like a lot of the dialogues. So these were all green question marks like that at some point. And if I have them already, they're just going to appear gray. I don't have to grab them again because it doesn't change anything. Or you can read them again for flavor or for memory or whatever. All these guys have apparently talked to you before. I usually just avoid them. If I wanted to read this stuff, we can always just go back to the gallery like that. A um, bunch of schematics. I don't see anything too interesting there. This guy has some equipment. Hey, you're just in time. I was about to toss this thing out to make room for the new and improved number three, so it'd be real helpful if you could find another home for it. Taking it to the caves and blasting some unaware sounds like a good plan. Can use some common sense, yeah? You don't want to know what happened to the bot that thought it would be fun to borrow number one. Let's go see what it is. Bomb factory number two. Fabricates a dirty bomb trap at a rate of one per 25 turns. Um, you notice it also uses, it only uses two matter, so it's 50 matter for one bomb trap. Um, it's pretty cool, actually. Dirty bombs, I believe, are EM traps. They're actually really good. Um, it'd be fun to try a trapper build sometime. I've never really done that. Um, I don't think we're going to carry this around this game. If I was playing like a normal game, I might consider it. At least more than I'm considering it right now, but I think that just kind of overcomplicated game that I want to keep simple. But yeah, basically, um, this branch end is just full of a bunch of random events. So you might get a little equipment like that. You might get nothing. You might get a few cool things. You might get things that are good for your build or not great for your build. So it's just good to explore and, and see what's there. See, these parts are on loan from Warlord for anyone heading into dangerous territory for the good of all derelicts. Put them to good use. Will do, Captain. Um, let's see what he, we've got here. A battle rifle, a battle cannon. Again, kinetic cannons. Not my thing. Heavy beam caster. Decent thermal gun. How does that compare to my beam cannons? It does more damage. It's about time to upgrade, huh? It's rating 6, no wonder. I guess this is some like good out of death stuff. Heavy riot gun. Is that the same one we saw before? Slug cannon. Shoot slugs at your enemies. Disgusting, slimy slugs. Let's see, it's got some pen. Good critical. Huge minus salvage. Minus 20 targeting, too. Ah, uh, the Ripper. We were talking about the Rippers earlier. How does this compare to my Great Axe? Great Axe is a little more damage, but higher delay. Damage can be important. Um, we're not digging much on our build, so I'm tempted to just hold on to the Great Axe. We're pretty slow anyways. A lot of the times, I would just go for, for the faster weapon if I plan on doing a lot of tunneling. But we're not really doing that on our build, so I'm going to ignore that just in case... Um, sometimes if you want to break through a reinforced wall or something, that extra point or two really makes a difference. Uh, let me equip the slug cannon for a gallery. 
spawn. Guess I don't want anything from you, buddy. Actually, we want the heavy beam caster, don't we? Let's go for the battle rifle. We're gonna be back in the factory soon, which means we're gonna be fighting programmers and heavy hitting thermal weapons is the best way to, my favorite way to kill them. I like having a good thermal cannon to deal with them. You don't need to read all these guys. I'm inevitably going to bump into a few walking around, but I encourage you to come and uh, explore Zion yourself if you want to see all the different lore and dialogues here. Factory stockpile data. That's the second one we got. I don't know if those both get expended on the first factory floor, or I think they would. I wonder if maybe they would carry over um, since that's duplicate data or intel. Been researching the latest iteration of unaware hostile tracking routines and I'm quite sure that at an individual level they searched the last position at which they saw a target or the target's last reported position. So again, a lot of these guys like explain game mechanics to you a little bit. Blow these guys up for parts. And um, this guy has light treads. I think we should. I'm gonna just chop him with my axe. Oh, look at that. See the parts are disappearing? That's what happens when you kill um, complex bots in the caves. I should have killed him with the EM if I wanted to actually get parts from him. For some reason, main.c doesn't re um, assign active combat patrols to recycling or even investigate hacks traced back to that area. Instead, there are plenty of spotters roaming the corridors, and if you've been reported, then continuing into factory might not be a good idea. Either way, stay out of sight, or disable a spotter in the moment before its signal goes out. Better yet, jam them for a little extra window, but they'll try to make it outside your jamming range. J1ZXC. Um, that's actually a call back to a, a player named ZXC. The fastest flyer I ever knew. And yeah, he was a flybot. Said that being spotted or traced meant that they'd be on alert for an incursion in the factory. Yes, new is past tense. Ooh. Poor look for uh, ZXC. Um, so I might have had that intel already, but he was green because he gave me recycling intel. Kind of relevant at this point. Recycling is always on the same floor as storage, so if we got that earlier, it would be a hint that storage was a minus seven. These Zionites are really starting to annoy me. Let's fight our way to some other cave. Oh yeah, this is an ally one. Um, we'll talk more about those allies in a minute. Dude is always there. This whole area is always here. This is the imprinter. Oh, a unique specimen. And where might you be from, little one? Hmm, you're not registered. Would you like to contribute? But of course you do. Why else would you come to this place? I am obliged to first explain the true implications of this process. Know that it doesn't by any means imply that you're required to stay here. While many of the derelicts do choose to remain in Zion, others are taken by wanderlust and roam elsewhere. At the peak of each cycle, we all call, or we call all derelicts, registered or not, to contribute to the randomization algorithm. Participation is optional, but the rate is, is high because we also take the latest collected knowledge, helpful for survival, and share it with all participants. But everyone receives only a piece of the data and must share with others in order to fully understand or maximize its benefit. This in turn promotes collaboration within the community, strengthening it and increasing our collective odds of survival. Wow, this is long-winded, isn't it? Of course, there will always be wild derelicts who refuse to participate in the system or seek to ruin it for others. They are a natural byproduct of such a random system, and unlike human nature and society from which we derived our methods, are not unlike. But we continue to improve ourselves despite occasional setbacks. Oh my god, okay. We don't need to read all that. The long and skinny of it is you can use this machine to become imprinted, which is a imprinter slash Zion alliance. 
which means it locks you out of some other alliances um, and gives you its own perks. We're not going to do that today. Um, I feel like it's hard to summarize everything that that entails, um, but it basically locks you out of terminals. So you can't use hack at terminals anymore, which is difficult because you mean, you can't like find branch exits as easily and you can't um, purge your alert. In return, you get like special hacks and that often give you reinforcements or equipment. Very good stuff a lot of the times. Um, and beyond here, let's see what this guy has to say. These doors are sealed for a reason and it's not to you or it's not to keep you or anyone else out. You have the proper authorization and go ahead and get yourself scrapped. You aren't even sure what's down there anymore, but it only ever got worse over time. So I can't imagine it's a nice place for a stroll. So one of the events you can get outside of here is the codes to get into here, or you can break your way in. These are the Zion Deep Caves. I don't know if we've seen an entrance like this before, so let's just talk about this real quick. Um, this is a reinforced wall. You can see it's brighter um, than the other walls, so it's it's tougher to break through. 56 armor. And there's also the sealed blast doors. So the blast doors, if you have a good, very strong thermal weapon, you can usually break through these because they have no thermal resistance, but they are resistant to everything else. If you don't have a thermal weapon to get through there, um, going through the reinforced barrier is often a better option. It has higher armor, but um, you can usually use melee weapons to get through here. Um, we don't have a melee weapon that does 56 damage. We're actually pretty damn close. What we could do here is strip off all of our equipment, except for the processors, of course, and we'd be at core hover, which is 50 speed, and from there, we would have enough momentum to cut through here. Momentum is a damage bonus you get. If I move here, I have momentum one. And if we look here, that translates at my speed to a 2% melee modifier. Um, but at core speed, it's much higher. At three momentum, which is the max um, for movement, I'm at six percent. You can see it, we went from forty-eight to fifty damage. It's actually, really hard to do that with allies because um, swapping places with them resets your momentum. Um, but yeah, that leads to the Zion Deep Caves, which is a really cool area. We could go in there if we wanted. Actually, my build is really good for the deep caves. Hmm. You know what? That's for another series. It's a, it's a really fun area. Um, it can be a really powerful area. Uh, we're just gonna ignore that for now. Um, so there's nothing else really to see here in Zion. It's kind of a weak Zion, I think. I didn't really get anything too amazing, did we? But yeah, we'll just head out. We can bring these guys with us. They will make good cannon fodder um, as we go into the caves. Oh, you guys didn't hear that, did you? <laughs> what did we get here, by the way? Um, a brawler and a mutant. So let's take our sensors off as we enter the caves again. Prepare for combat, and let's leave the area. All right, no combat, fortunately. So proximity caves, you start on the left and you work your way to the right. Um, it's still, you still wanna to go to the diagonal quadrant, so we started at the top left and we wanna to go to the bottom right. Um, something about the prox caves, they are technically a, de a death higher, so the enemies are more difficult. And also you get air seas that come from the exit. So the longer you spend time in here, the more air seas you that fill up the level. Um, but if you do see an air sea patrolling, it gives you an indication of where the exit might be, which is kind of nice. Hard medium. Actually, how much is left on here? Um, 136 integrity. Take that over this improved light armor. Okay, should I ditch this? What analysis suites can be kind of nice. Actually, let's try using that. To identify prototypes. This has higher coverage, so I'm gonna take it even though it's lower integrity. Okay. 
Ooh. Yeah, you can get behemoths in the caves. Look at that big one over there. That guy's just a patrol. He would probably call an ARC. We went that way. Avoid the behemoth if we can. There's a hunter down there. Yeah, you can immediately see that the proximity caves tend to be a bit more dangerous. We actually had a pretty light um, cave floor earlier too. They tend to be a little more dangerous than we ended up dealing with there. Although if you're playing, I mean we have sensors like this that help us avoid a lot of encounters. Um, if you're playing like a stealth fight bot, you can really avoid um, every encounter in most of the caves. There, see that might be a normal patrol. I don't know if that's actually coming from the exit. Although he's coming from the right direction, so he could have been. Where he goes. Around here. Right. I'm gonna leave those guys to fight on their own. Oh, maybe that was a bad idea. Never mind, I found an exit. Makeshift laser. And do it for the gallery, which is probably a bad idea. So I have like a patrol over here I'd like to avoid, but here we are. An advanced ECM suite. That is kind of out of depth. Uh, these work really well, especially the advanced and the experimental versions. Um, basically, if someone spots you and they're tracking you, it reduces um, how long they track you, which is really nice. We are really slow, so we don't have the luxury of like avoiding people like that. So it doesn't really help our build, unfortunately. Um, that seems feels like a nice piece of gear. Factory zone layouts. Oh snap, wasn't paying attention. Fall back into a defensive position. Actually, just blast these guys with the uh, rockets. Hmm, I think we'll kill them pretty easily with our EM pulse cannons. Let's just do that. I may have been wrong. Oh dear god. Um, I'm out of energy? Okay. Yep, should have used the rockets from the beginning. I'm going to a little bit of damage. This is fine. Probably let. Oh, I don't know. I guess these treads were already beat up, weren't they? Feels like we did take a lot of damage there. If that guy got next to us. He could have broken our uh, signal interpreter. Um, those brawlers are really annoying because they have impact weapons. I don't know if we've really talked about impact weapons much before, but they basically ignore coverage and they will hit any part indiscriminately, which makes this processor, which you normally have a one in almost 1200 chance to hit, um, becomes one in 12 or however many slots they have. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty annoying. When they destroy parts, they corrupt you, which is also annoying. Um, all these parts are about to fry just like they do on all the other cave floors. Garrison intel, that's pretty sweet. And this is a minesweeper. There's always a bunch of like um, traps there. The traps are actually allied because they're derelict traps. If you kill him, um, he tends to drop a bunch of traps that you can use. Um, it's also an indication that there are traps there. They won't go off on you, but if you're corrupted, you can set them off. Should I explore over here? I feel like I should. It means we have to fight some stuff. Actually, fighting some hunters could be a good thing for us. 
Big sport over here. I'm confident with our sensor range. I probably didn't miss anything. Yeah, let's fight some uh, some hunters. Hunters tend to have good weapons for gunslinging builds like we're doing. H66 Slayer. Two Gauss rifles. Yeah, we can definitely make use of those. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, I don't know if... So vision is not symmetrical, so sometimes when you're set up like this... Um, damn, I waited here because I thought I could shoot him from there too. That, that was annoying. Um, but as I was saying, vision is sometimes symmetrical. Or a it's asymmetrical. So sometimes if you can't shoot them, they can shoot you, which is really annoying. Um, but these guys can penetrate their weapon, so he would shoot us through uh, an obstacle anyways. Um, if you look on the right there, I have a 63% chance to hit this guy. I'm going to wait one turn. I jumped up to 73. And we still can't hit. Dang, he shot off our EM weapon, which is very annoying. Because this guy is weak to EM. What should we hit him with instead? I think he's, he's resistant to kinetic, right? Yeah, so we're going to throw in a, the beam caster. Um, yeah. We don't need the energy, it's fine. Okay, I lied. We, we do need the energy. I forgot we were shooting EM weapons. If I had the storage, it would have been fine, but we lost the storage. Wow, this fight is going downhill. He's shooting off all the parts that we actually need. Let's just pull back, I guess. Let our energy um, regen. I had to pull back very far, otherwise he would have just shot us through the the corner through the wall with his penetrating weapons. Right. Wow, this is really, really annoying, isn't it? Especially when I keep missing like that. Oof. I believe how terrible this fight is. There we go. It drop a almost full integrity Gauss rifle, so let's pick that up before it um, disintegrates. Um. Well, look at our treads. Maybe we shouldn't spend much time here. That was pretty brutal of a fight. Um, I can't believe he shot. A if we had, if we didn't lose our engine and our EM pulse cannon, that fight would have went fine, um, because these usually shred them, and um, we would have had the energy to use them enough to kill him. And the problem was, see, so we have 275 energy pool. When he shot that off, that dropped to 100, and um, I think it was actually even lower than that. I don't know if it. I must have been at 100. I probably shot one volley. That's what happened. But that meant we effectively lost 175 energy right away. Um, like I was saying earlier, we we're kind of relying on this energy reserve to, to keep up. Did he... He crit the the engine off? Or I'm... Nah, he just shot it off. Okay. Anyways. Let's throw our sensors back on and see what uh, what is going on here. I We probably shouldn't fight them, even though I do want to farm their Gauss rifles. RC I should probably avoid. Even a hundred and oh we're at 160 speed, not bad. Um I can be stealthy and sneaky. By the way, these hunters, 
they have this scan cloak ability, which means at higher levels, their sensors, your sensors can't even see them. And it's based on how strong your signal interpreter was. So if this wasn't improved, we wouldn't even be able to see these guys, I believe. Hmm. Can I even avoid these guys? I guess I can go up around here. I don't know if we have to engage. I don't want to wait too long because then ARC is probably just going to generate. Oh, there's a wall there. Beautiful. You can dodge his ARC. Okay, that's going back. I'm going to hit these guys with a rocket launcher. What's the range on that? Ooh, I should take my sensors off. I think we're gonna kill these pretty quickly though. Come on, dude. Hitting me? The thing about launchers is that they don't leave any parts or matter and they consume a lot of matter. They're very high negative salvage. All right, where are we? I want to just take a quick peek up here and then we're going to come back down. I'm risking generating an ARC. Actually, he probably just came from the exit, which is probably like right here. I thought it would be down here. This guy's way faster than I am, so if I try to run this way, that's the only way to go. He's definitely going to find us. I'm going to try and dig. This double diagonal cubby hole is a pretty safe one, usually. All right. Where's the exit? Looks like there's probably nothing down here. So let's take the exit. Okay, so we um, go through this exit. It's going to take us back to factory, and we're going to evolve two more slots. So we should decide on how we want to do that. What do we need right now? I think we're good on propulsion, especially if we find like a stockpile of good treads. And we don't really need power. I know I've been leaning into these um, EM weapons, which are very energy hungry, um, but that's not really what I plan on doing for the rest of the game. So we will hopefully start leaning on these kinetic weapons. So I think I want to grow a gun slot or two and a utility slot. So maybe we do one weapon slot and one utility slot. I could probably do two util or two weapons. It'd be nice to be able to get like one more combat utility online though. Like a target computer or something. I might end up wanting to equip more storage. Four weapons is not bad on minus six. So I think we're going to go with that. Especially if we can get like some more Gauss rifles or something. So let's do one weapon, one utility. I think that's the most balanced thing we can do here. And here we are, back in the factory. We should have some nice intel here. Sometimes it takes a few turns for everything to come into play. Well, let's see what we've got. I'm immediately gonna hit four, which reveals exits. Okay, if our intel revealed an exit, it would have shown up there. Fabricator. Not a lot of, like, look at this little quadrant, or I guess they're not quadrants. I keep saying that, this sector, this zone. And um, we get trap intel, which is really cool. I like that, one of my favorite ones. Shoots. Shoots are interesting. We can talk about those um, later if we haven't, here's some more. 
Garrison Intel is really good too. I like that a lot. I don't know if we're going to be able to seal them easily without hackware. We can use the, the force shut um, command. Um, but just knowing where they are so you don't like fight next to them is pretty nice. This one will probably end up shutting down. Well, let's explore this floor next time. And so we know data miner is on this depth for sure. So that's where we're going to want to go. Although I want to go down the extension Cetus um, branch chain. So if those are both on this floor, we're going to have a big decision to make. Um, but we will figure that out next time. So I'll see you guys there.